Okay. Today I'm going to talk about a new feature in Redbat, which is about comparing energy tariffs. So <clears throat> if you want to uh, go and compare the different tariffs on the market and decide which one you might be best to switch to, then it's actually much more challenging than you think if you're um, if you're a home battery user, because you can go and find one of those um, apps and there's a there's a few of them available that will do a free comparison, especially across the Octopus Energy Tariffs, but you can probably do them with other ones as well. It'll download your existing usage and then work out how much it would have cost you if you'd been on a different tariff. Now, that's all very well without a battery. It's just home usage and it's probably representative. But if you've got a battery and you're driving it, then obviously the way you drive the battery is going to change depending on the tariff. So... For example, if you had five hours at night at cheap rate, then you might charge at those five hours cheap rate. Um, if suddenly you had to pick a different tariff that had, say, two, three hour sections at different times, you'd have to change your charging uh, plan accordingly. So now if you compared historical data, obviously the one with the two, three hour cheap rates is going to cost more, but you might not actually do that if you adjust things. So. And that can be quite challenging. So the idea here with Fredbat is instead what it can do is you can have a selection of tariffs and then it'll make a plan for each one of those tariffs for the next 12 hour period and then give you some information on how much that might cost. Um, so that will then get recorded um, and not by default it's running at the moment at every night at midnight or I might make that configurable at the moment and so you'll get the next day's cost. And then you can look historically across and compare. Um, so in the documentation, there's this new section called comparing energy tariffs. Um, a little bit of a warning about the limitations and some of that I might be able to improve in the future. But obviously for car charging, if you go and plug in your car at 4 p.m., then obviously a comparison you've made starting at midnight for the next 24 hours won't account for the fact you plug the car in later in the day. Um, so it's um it's going to be sort of representative but won't necessarily reflect the true picture um there in all cases and also smart tariffs like octopus intelligent go will give you extra cheap slots at certain points and obviously Fredback can't predict that you might get those extra cheap slots in the future so it may not be totally accurate um and in the future i may be able to extend it so that um it looks at your sort of um, potential car charging and then readjusts the times that you might charge based on the tariff. But at the moment, that's not been done. Um, so uh, just be careful a little bit with the car charging. Um, so the first thing you have to do is actually select the tariffs you want to compare. Let, before I go into the details on how to do that, let me show you my setup here. This is just a demonstration where what I've done is I've set first row here is my current tariff, um, which actually is the Octopus Intelligent Go with a fixed export. And then I've set a selection of different tariffs that I could maybe move to and from. In fact, I couldn't move to and from Cozy because I don't actually have a heat pump, but it's just uh, an indicative here. Um, and when you look at my template, it'll have all of these in here and you can comment in and out the ones that you want, or you can add your own tariffs as well um so for each one of those it's run a prediction this was last run at 8 20 this morning um you can see normally this would just be run just after midnight automatically but you can run it whenever you want just by clicking the compare button it does take a little while because it's got to make the plans for each one of these so if it takes a few minutes for each one you might find it takes 15 odd minutes to run but the data's saved so when you restart probat it'll just reload it what was saved last you won't lose it um so here it's going to show you there's a true cost column um which um you might actually see is called metric as well in some cases um and i should probably change the title of that but the true cost is essentially the the amount that it costs you but it also calculates how much battery you started the day with and how much you ended the day with and also how much eye boost you might have done if you've got eye boost enabled and then it factors that into the cost so in this case it's saying i kind of ended the day with less battery than i started with um and this makes sense because um 
my battery is more charged at 8 20 in the morning than it will be at midnight at the end of this plan or whatever time it was so it's kind of added to the true cost and this allows you to compare across tariffs because otherwise if you don't do that you might have one tariff where you have a flat battery and the other one where you've charged loads and they're not really comparable so i would use the true cost figure to compare but the cost is the actual price um cost 10 percent just gives you the idea for your 10 percent scenario which is the PV 10% and also the load scaling 10. So if you've got a higher predicted load, so this is basically bad solar and a higher in the predicted load, how much would it cost you? So you can see whether there's any swing <coughs> between <coughs> the, the the average cost and the 10% cost. Um, then this just tells you how much you'd import from the grid and how much you export. Unfortunately, my battery's going flat too soon, so I'm not exporting anything. It tells you the final battery level that you'll end up with um, and how much I boost the carbon for the day, positive or negative. And then best will be tagged against the one with the the first one with the lowest true cost. So actually my current's just marginally less than anything else um, you can see it makes no difference which export i pick because i'm not exporting anything existing will only show up if the energy rates exactly match your existing tariff which is why i've got current here um, and i think there's a slight difference between the octopus intelligent go that i'm downloading and my current one just because of the car charging slots and things but it's probably in the noise um, so then you can see on the chart, what you'll see here is my historical costs. So I've got two costs here. The actual cost that Prebat predicted it would cost you each day here. Um, this is, I've got a lot of history on this because this is already being calculated and you'll have this today. And also the cost without car charging. And I put that on because like I said, the car charging predictions going forward might not be that accurate. So you might want to compare between the two. And then what we've got is a bar for each day with all the different tariffs. <clears throat> it's a bit small here, but let's just zoom in on one and have a look. So what we're going to see is on the 4th of February, here's my different tariffs lined up. Um, and then you can look at each of the different ones and see how much it predicted the, the cost would be. And so you can see the Intelligent Go is, is by far the cheapest. This line thing kind of jumps around in a way that... It's a little bit confusing, but we'll we'll ignore that for a minute. Um, so then um, this is the um, standard Go as opposed to Intelligent Go with a higher unit rate. Um, and then this is essentially Agile with either fixed or variable export. Again, it makes no difference to me because I'm not exporting anything. Then we've got Flux and then we come down to Cozy Fixed and Cozy Agile. So Actually, if I was to switch tariff, the next cheapest one for me would probably be Cozy um, on um, on today's data. But we'd have to look over a few days and see what it looks like. But obviously, you can see the tariff I'm on, the Octopus Intelligent Co. is winning um, out on those days that I've, that I've looked at it. <coughs> and um, let me see, it predicted a bit higher um, for today. And we'll see what the actual is tomorrow when the actual figure comes in. Um, you can see the gap here between car charging and not car charging is because I did charge the car <laughs> on those days. Um, but the car charging wouldn't have been fully predicted. Um, so then what you can do is you drill into the, the plans for each of them. So if you scroll down, you can see what my current tariff is and what the plan is. So I charge overnight to 100%. It's not very exciting. Similar for the for the other export, um, for the Agile export, you can see the different rates, but I don't have anything to export. Um, you can see for the um, the standard Go, my rates are slightly higher. Then that's not very interesting. Now, if I look for Agile import, for example, you can see what my plan would be on Agile when I'd be charging and when I wouldn't be. You can see I'm starting to charge at these 25p rates, so it's more expensive for me at the moment, But um, and that's fixed export. And then you could look at the Agile with Agile export. You can see there's some higher rate slots here, but I don't have any battery for them. 
And then we can have a look at flux. Um, and in fact, if we look at flux here, you see it's trying to get me over this peak period um, and then holding on the 24p1, then charging on the cheap period. And I, I don't have enough battery to get through the day, so it doesn't work very well for me. I'm having to do this bit of charging here to get through the peak. But um, <clears throat> so, yeah, and then we've got Cozy and Cozy is interesting because you've got a couple of cheap charging slots that I can use to get through the peak, but it's still going to cost 12.69 as opposed to the 7p. So it still costs more for me. Um, and so that's all your different plans and you can have a scan through that. Um, obviously, if one of these bars is consistently lower than the other, I'd say that was a good indication you might want to switch. Obviously, if it's going up and down on different days, then that might be different. So that's how it works. Um, how is it configured? There's some information here about how to configure it. Um, so the way I configure these ones is I use the Octopus URLs for the different tariffs. You can copy mine if you want, but be, be aware there's a region code here. So this is region A, for example. I'm not actually in region A, the template's just set to A, but you might want to change that for your region letter. And I think I provided a link to that somewhere. Here it is, region code. So if you click through to here, you can see what code you are and you can change that letter and it'll get your local rates. You can also do things like, here's a fixed rate example, <clears throat> um, and you can do the sort of different times and different rates, just like you do on your main tariffs in here. You can also use the other um, possible configuration options, like you can point to the Octopus integration, you can point to the My Energy Data Service integration um, as well. And um, and that allows you to configure the different tariffs you want to compare. Um, so that's kind of the basics. You'll also get some sensors out. So the sensors will have that data in that crypts the charts. So you don't have to do the charts through the web interface. You So this is through the Prevrat web interface. You could create your own also on the Apex charts. And I will publish the templates for this soon. But bear in mind, it's one series per tariff. And I don't know what tariffs you're setting up. So you'll obviously have to change the tariff names to match. Um, so if I just go into the file editor, you can see how this is all configured here. So you need to give an ID name for each tariff. And that's important because that will give you the sensor name that it creates. Um, and then you can give it a, a human name as well. And then you give it the import and export rates for each one. There are some other features I'm going to add to this later. Like you will eventually be able to compare different Prevac configurations for the same tariff. So you could say something like, well, what if I turned um, off or on um, calculate export on charge? Or what if I um, changed my uh, SOC keep? How would that impact my costs over time? Um, and I'm going to show some examples of those in the future as to how you look at tuning different Prevac settings and the costs that those might produce but for now I'm just keeping this simple and explaining the tariff configuration options um, so that is the um, long and the short of the feature uh, when you set this up for the first time this table won't have any values in um, if you don't want to wait till midnight hit the compare now button and then let it run and then it will slowly fill the values in um, this page only refreshes every five minutes, but if you click the compare tab, it'll refresh instantly if you're impatient and you're waiting for it to, to update. Um, and um, if I look at the sensors, so you can see I found one of the compare sensors. So this is my tariff called Agile Agile, which is matches that ID name that I set. Um, I can obviously see the history of it in here, just like I would for any other sensor. So I've not had this running very long, but I can see the different prices on the different days. And it has actually changed in the day because I've rerun it a few times as I've been doing some testing. And then you can see all the values that kept. Not all of these are on the chart, but you've got things like the um, carbon in the 10% scenario. You've got the back, the value, calculated value of the battery at the start and end. Um, you've also got the... Um, imported and exported um, amounts 
etc so you can obviously use these for other automations if you want and then you'll find there's another one for each one of those ids that you set up um so that is really how it works um and um i'm quite excited about this because i don't think any other solution can do this at the moment um, and we can certainly add more features to it in the future and make it more accurate but I'd be interested to know your feedback and whether it produces results that you'd expect for your tariff or whether there's any inaccuracies there. It's worth also mentioning that all this is based on how you've configured PredBat. So if you've said something like keep five kilowatt hours SOC, then all of these will be with that keep set that way. So it's not going to change your settings. Um, and if you said oh, just control charge and not charge and export, then you won't get any exports so it's dependent on how it's all set up at the moment like i said in the future i'll add some options to be able to control that further and look at different setups but for now it's the case if you've got your losses incorrect then you may also find that the plans aren't quite right because the actual cost is going to be based on your import and export sensors um, which is what these charts are, whereas your predicted ones are obviously based on what ProBat predicts. So if you set your losses too low, for example, then the cost would be higher than with the prediction, or if you set them too high, then it could be lower. Um, and also it depends on how much you've done things like load scaling. If you set your load scaling really high, then the predictions are going to be more pessimistic. And if you set your PV scaling low, then they'll be more pessimistic and so on. So... That's just something to keep in mind. And I think this might actually allow some tuning as well. Um, you can see the car charging got in the way there. But if I zoom into when I wasn't charging my car, then you can see my actual actually matches my predicted fairly well. So this line is um, reasonably where it's here, the actual of 164. So the predicted is 175. So that's not too far off and i've got a little bit more load scaling of 1.1 on mine so i might be able to tune that and get it more accurate but obviously it's going to vary day to day depending on what you do as well so i think that's um that's everything and um thanks very much for watching hope you enjoy the feature and uh, look forward to some feedback bye for now